What's going on guys? Welcome back to Weekly GCap, the only source you'll ever need to catch up on all the gaming news from the last week. We got a lot of stuff to go through today, including full recaps of all of the showcases that have happened in the last week. Summer Game Fest, Xbox, Capcom, and the Ubisoft showcase. But that'll be towards the end of the video. First, we have a good number of stories to go through. So let's go ahead and get right into this. First things first, a Shadows of the Damned remaster was announced. I am so excited for this. Shadows of the Damned is truthfully such an underrated gem from the Xbox 360 and PS3 generation. Unfortunately, we don't know... All like literally anything about this game the release date or like anything that they plan to change we don't know if this is going to be like one of those remasters where it's more of just like an upscale of the original or if this is going to be like a full-blown remake i mean you're seeing it on your screen this is all we know about the game and that is to say literally nothing they uploaded like this cool little trailer just announcing it but that was really all i'm super excited for this game and as soon as we know more i'll let you guys know as always and in the meantime go check out the original if you haven't it's an absolutely phenomenal game it's on xbox 360 and ps3 it is totally worth the playthrough next up i got a pretty exciting update for all you triangle strategy fans out there so this coming from nintendo life quote version 1.1.0 is coming june 11th 2023 so by the time you're seeing this it's already out you can go download it but added a character story replay feature added a story battle replay feature added extra chapter events note you must have completed serene wait serenoa's wrote i think as i say root in the main story to play the extra chapters several issues have been addressed to improve the gameplay experience and quote so if you have triangle strategy or if you know you you've been looking for an excuse to dive back into the game or if you've been looking for some new content well then here you go and for our next story this is less of a story and just more like an update on an upcoming game uh armored core 6 previews went live so if, you know if you've been itching to see some more gameplay of the game you can just go look up some videos on youtube i would show the gameplay here but i know there's a lot of people similar to me where they like to go into games as blind as possible not seeing too much gameplay so you know i'm just kind of showing the trailer on screen right now just so i don't spoil it for anybody but if that interests you there is videos on youtube you can go watch them the game actually looks pretty good personally i've been really looking forward to this game and i don't want any spoilers i don't want to see anything about the gameplay i want to experience it for myself but i won't lie i did get i did sneak a little peek i snuck like a little 30 second peek and yeah it looks pretty great given everything that from software has accomplished in the last couple years i think armor core 6 is probably going to be the biggest entry in the series to date and for our next story once again this is less of a story and just more like a quick update on an upcoming game the final fantasy 16 demo is available now one thing worth noting is that there is two plus hours of the prologue and all of the progress that you make in this demo will carry carry over to the full game. Also, another thing worth noting is that once you complete the demo, it will unlock a special battle demo, so that's pretty interesting. Again, Final Fantasy 16 is one that I'm really looking forward to, and when it comes to games that I'm really looking forward to, I tend to not really play demos. I'd rather just wait until the full game comes out so I can get their own release date, get their own launch day, play it first thing, and experience the whole thing from front to back. I hate playing demos and then having to, you know, just sit with that anticipation. I'd rather just get the game in my hands, play through the whole thing in one shot, and yeah, but anyway, if you've been looking forward to this game or if you're unsure about it or if you just want to you know get a feel for the game see how it plays the demo is out now you can go download it on the playstation 5 and for our next story this one is really interesting but honestly it made my entire week so mcdonald's released a game boy color game in the year 2023 yeah so uh this is coming from time extension quote developed by cruel toys grimace's birthday launched yesterday via its own website you can play the game in your browser but the game itself was built to function on nintendo's 1998 handheld and the raw image dump has been dumped online so you can do just that. The game is a platformer which sees the return of McDonald Land gr characters Grimace, Birdie, the Early Bird, Hamburglar, and the McNugget Buddies, all to mark the arrival of the Grimace's birthday ice cream shake products served at U.S. McDonald's restaurants. End quote. And yeah, I played the game for myself, and I can tell you, it, it really is a Game Boy Color game. They absolutely nailed it. It is truthfully a lot of fun. And yeah, whether you play it on your browser or you try to, you know, download the ROM, get it on a cartridge, and play it on your Game Boy Color, however you decide to do it, it's definitely worth playing through. However you decide to do, you know, it's a it's a fun little novelty. It's a fun little game. And for our next story, this one's a little sad for my Friday the 13th fans out there. The, the game's going to be shutting down. You know, the servers are going to be going offline. So let me just go ahead and read this for you. This is coming from the developers. Quote, the time has come. Our license for Friday the 13th will expire on December 31st, 2023. On that day, Friday the 13th, the game will no longer be available for sale, both physically and digitally. The game will, however, continue to function through at least December 31st, 2024, if you already own it. At this time, we've made the decision to reduce the price to $4.99 for the base game and $0.99 for each piece of DLC content. We will continue to offer the title and content at that price point up right up until it is removed from digital slash physical storefronts on December 31st, 2023. We would like to thank our community for the dedication they've shown to Friday the 13th, the game, and Gun Interactive as a whole. And we are happy the game will live on a while longer and continue to be enjoyed by anyone owning the game already, end quote. So yeah, that's pretty sad. Personally, I haven't played the game that much. I played it a good bit back at launch and I had a lot of fun with it, but you know, I just, you know, as time went on, 
I kind of fell off it. But I know there's like a very dedicated community that still plays this game to this day. So, you know, I really feel for you guys. And hey, if you've just been kind of looking from the sidelines, unsure if, if this game is worth the time or money, I mean, <laughs> I mean, at this point, the game is literally $4.99 and each piece of DLC is only 99 cents. So, you know, if, you, if you've been unsure of the past or if, you know, you wanted to try the game, but you never had the chance to, I highly recommend doing so now before the game is gone for good. And while we're talking about unfortunate delistings and games getting shut down, let's go ahead and talk about Soul Calibur 5 because this game is also getting delisted. This coming from the Soul Calibur Twitter account, quote, Valiant Warriors Soul Calibur 5 is taking its final curtain call on the stage of history and will be sunset on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 on June 19, 2023, which is in three days from the time that you guys are seeing this video. The base game and all associated DLC will no longer be available for purchase. Thank you for your continued support, end quote. The Soul Calibur series, I mean, it's pretty legendary. It's, uh, and Soul Calibur 5, especially. That game was a lot of fun. I have a lot of memories of that game. Thankfully, I still have a physical copy, so I would, I would definitely recommend going and picking up this game, whether it be digitally or physically. Just make sure you have it in your collection somehow, because this game is honestly fantastic, and I would hate for anybody to miss out on it. One quick thing I would like to highlight is that the Hypermax Nintendo Switch sale is going on right now. So, you know, there's a bunch of games on sale. I don't have time to go through it. There was literal hundreds of games ranging from being, like, 30% off for some of the first party titles. There's a lot of Nintendo titles that draw from, like, 60 to $70 to only being about, like, 42-ish dollars right now. But there's also a bunch of other games that are as low as, like, literally 50 cents. But, uh, some of the main ones that I wanted to highlight, for example, are, like, Mario and Rabbid Sparks of Hope. Yeah, this game came out not that long ago, and it's already 50% off. You can get it for $30, and, you know, that game is actually a lot of fun. So, if you haven't played this one yet, I definitely recommend going to pick that up, or just, you know, boot up your Switch, scroll through the eShop, because I promise you, there's a lot of quality stuff on sale. Uh, another one that I saw was, like, the Borderlands collection. So, it's kind of bizarre how they have it. They have the Borderlands Handsome Collection, which has Borderlands pre-sequel and Borderlands 2 for $10, and then they also have Borderlands 1 by itself for $10, but then they have the Borderlands Collection, which has Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2, and Borderlands pre-sequel for $10. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty obvious which one you should be getting. Get the Borderlands Collection that has, like, all three games if you decide to get that, rather than buying them all separately for $20, and then, uh, like, the Bioshock Collection right now is only uh, $10, so definitely scroll through the sale, see if anything catches your eye, because right now is definitely the time to get some games. And for our next story, this one should surprise absolutely nobody, but Summer Game Fest will be returning in 2024. This coming from the Summer Game Fest Twitter account, quote, after a record-setting 2023, we are excited to share some news. Summer Game Fest will return in June 2024, including our live showcase event hosted by Jeff Keighley and Summer Game Fest play days from I Am 8-Bit. Stay tuned for more details in the coming months, end quote, which, yeah, that should surprise absolutely nobody. Summer Game Fest has been getting seemingly more and more popular every single year, and with this year, you know, obviously E3 kind of bit the dust, unfortunately. I really miss E3, and I wish you could make a comeback, but it's looking less and less likely as the years go on. But anyway, Summer Game Fest, uh, you know, there, nothing could truly ever replace E3 in my heart, but it is a nice substitute. It is another nice showcase, and, you know, I really enjoyed Summer Game Fest this year. It was probably, arguably, one of the stronger, if not the strongest showcase to date. You know, they were just hitting game after game after game, not too much filler. They seem to be getting down a really nice formula over there. So, yeah, I'm excited to see what comes next for Summer Game Fest. Next up, it seems like Sony is making a push for cloud streaming for PlayStation 5 games, which that's pretty interesting because up to this point, we've only had streaming for select PS4 games and, you know, like PS3 and stuff like that, but not really too much when it comes to like PS5 yet. So anyway, this is coming from PlayStation blog, quote, we have very exciting news for PlayStation Plus premium members. We're currently testing cloud streaming for supported PS5 games. This includes PS5 titles from the PlayStation Plus game catalog and game trials, as well as supported digital PS5 titles that players own. When this feature launches, cloud game streaming for supported PS5 titles will be available for use directly on your PS5 consoles. That means as a premium member, it'll be easier to jump into your favorite games without downloading them first onto your PS5 console. Our goal is to add this as an additional benefit to PlayStation Plus Premium as part of our ongoing efforts to enhance the value of PlayStation Plus. And I I assume to a certain extent this might, uh, you know, have something to do with the fact that they are releasing Project Q soon, which is in, you know, entirely based around being a streaming device. So I take it that they're doing everything in their power right now to utilize the technology that they've already been working on for Project Q and using it elsewhere just to help, you know, bring in more revenue to see a bigger return on investment per se, especially with the so-so reception to Project Q so far. I've spoken my piece on cloud gaming many, many times. Personally, I just prefer to play games natively, but I must say in a world where basically every single game is like one to two hundred gigabytes, some even getting close to like 300 gigabytes. I know like Warzone 1 at one point was like over 200 gigabytes, um, but you know, in a world where file sizes are getting that ginormous, 
could cloud streaming actually have a future in gaming? Like, is it possible that this could not be, like, a niche thing anymore and could actually be, like, a viable way to play games? Because as of now, when it comes to cloud gaming services and stuff like that, most of them are either in beta or most of them have to have warnings like, hey, we're still kind of testing the technology. It's not so great. You might experience some hiccups. Depends on your connection, yada, yada, yada. But I wonder if one day we're going to get to a point of where playing cloud games is almost indistinguishable from playing them natively. And if it gets to that point, Honestly, I would be all on board for cloud gaming. It's just at this current point in time, obviously the technology isn't there. It isn't quite great. Uh, you know, there's still places in the world without internet or internet that isn't so great. So until the technology improves, I'm still going to be playing my games natively. That being said, I will definitely be keeping up with this technology. And once this service comes out, I will at least try because who knows? Could we get to a point of where services like this are available on other platforms and you like, like like we could get to a point of where you don't even necessarily need a console like sure you could you know obviously get the console so you can play the games natively but if xbox game pass and their cloud streaming things get to a point of where it's almost like you're playing the game natively but you can do that on your phone because they have things like that available or you can just play it on your browser and if sony ends up dabbling their toes in that could we see a future where we don't even necessarily need consoles to play the most recent and big triple a games a lot of speculation there but i definitely love to hear your guys thoughts on that because the whole conversation around cloud streaming you know even though again i do prefer to play my games natively i do find it very interesting as you guys probably know at this point i always like to update you guys on you know whatever's happening with the subscription service whether that be PlayStation Plus or Xbox Game Pass or Nintendo Switch Online. And this time, I have an update on the PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium Games for the month of June. So, we're just going to fly through this. This is like 20-some games. And after this, I literally have to rattle off like hundreds of titles for the gaming show recap. So, we're going to get through this as quick as we can. So, for the extra tier, we have Rogue Legacy 2, Far Cry 6, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge, Inscription, Solstice, Tacoma, DSX Mankind Divided, Killing Floor 2, phenomenal game by the way, Lonely Mountains Downhill, Vampire the Masquerade Coteries of New York, 100 Days Winemaking Simulator, A Hat in Time, another phenomenal game by the way, Cartel, Forager, Dodgeball Academia, a very underrated game, The Wild at Heart, Red Out 2, Thief, MX vs. AT Legends, Paul Patrol Mighty Pup Save Adventure Bay, I'm definitely downloading that one, <laughs> My Friend Peppa Pig, DC League of Super Pets, The Adventures of Crypto and Ace, The Talos Principle Deluxe Edition, Elix 2. And then in the premium tier, we have Killzone Liberation for the PSP, Worms, and Herc's Adventure. So, you know, a pretty solid lineup all around. I'll definitely be checking a good handful of these games out. I'd definitely love to hear from you guys down in the comments. Is there any games from this list that you're excited to hop into or try out once the games go live? All right, so now we're going to do a massive recap of all the showcases. Summer Game Fest, Xbox, Capcom, Ubisoft, all of them. I'm going to go through and rattle off every game that was... If there was a game that was even shown for three seconds, we are going to be talking about it. So we're not going to be going too in-depth. There's a lot that we got to get through. I told you guys in the last WGC, I wasn't sure if I was going to do full recaps or not. But when it comes to these videos, I give you guys nothing less than my all. So with that being said, I've watched all of these showcases. I took notes. I wrote down every single thing that was shown in as much detail as possible. So now I'm going to do my best to rattle off all of these game titles for you. Please bear with me. So first up, we have Summer Game Fest. And I'm going to tell you, every single game that was shown at Summer Game Fest. Are you ready? Three, two, one, let's go. Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Mortal Kombat 1 gameplay. Path of Exile 2. Exo Prime. Nicolas Cage was on stage, you know, because he's going to be in, like, Dead by Daylight soon. So, yeah, th th I mean, there was that. Does that count as a game? I don't know. It was shown. The Witcher Season 3 Volume 1 trailer. Witchfire. Crossfire Sierra Squad. Remnant 2. Sonic Superstars, Honkai Star Rail, Lies of P, Sandland, Throne and Liberty, Party Animals, Dying Light 2 getting a new update, Crash Team Rumble, Alan Wake 2, it was just some more gameplay for the game, Warhammer Space Marine 2, Yes Your Grace Snowfall, Toxic Commando, Baldur's Gate 3, Spider-Man 2, they showed off like the box art and some more gameplay and confirmed that Venom will not be Eddie Brock, which is uh, pretty interesting, I wonder who that's going to be, Pal World, Land of the Morning Light, Lord of the Rings Return to Moria, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis, which is a new mobile game, so I might check that out, not sure. Banisher's Ghost of New Eden, Like a Dragon, The Man Who Erased His Name, Under the Waves, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, they just kind of showed off the Season 4 trailer. Uh, something about Porsche, and there was like a Xbox Series X you can win with like a Porsche design on it. Fay Farm, looks like an Animal Crossing type game. Marvel Snap, I believe it was like a new mode or something like that they were, that they were showing off for that game. King Arthur Legends Rise, another mobile game. Wayfinder, 
Unreal Editor for Fortnite, which is out now, and Fortnite Season 4 Wilds, which should also be out by the time that you guys are seeing this video. Honestly, I don't play Fortnite too much anymore. Star Trek Infinite. Twisted Metal. It's, it's just a new TV show, though, unfortunately. It's not a new game. Let's Fanga. Immortals of Avium. And Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. That was everything showing off at Summer Game Fest. Now it's time for us to talk about everything showing off at Xbox. Now this one... Um, yeah, there's still a lot of games to talk about. All right, let's just go ahead and get through this. There was a trailer for Fable. South of Midnight, uh, it's the latest game from the We Happy Few devs. Star Wars Outlaws, it's Ubisoft Star Wars game. 33 Immortals, which looks to be like Hades with like 33 players. Looks pretty interesting. Payday 3, Persona 3 Reload, Avowed, Sea of Thieves expansion, Flight Sim 2024, Hellblade 2, but that was just more like an in-engine test footage type of thing, not really gameplay. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, Fallout 76 Atlantic City expansion, Path of the Goddess, Forza Motorsport, Persona Tactica, The Elder Scrolls Online Necrom expansion, Overwatch 2 Invasion update, Starfield Story trailer, Jassant, I think is how you say it, uh, it's from the Life is Strange developers, which their games are always amazing, Still Wakes the Deep, Dungeons of Hinterburg, Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty DLC, City Skylines 2, which launches this October, and it's coming to Game Pass, Metaphor Re Fantasio, it's a new fantasy RPG from Atlas, the Persona devs, Towerborn, Clockwork Revolution, heavy Bioshock Infinite vibes with this one, and then a 1 terabyte model of the Xbox Series S is on the way, it's like carbon black, it actually looks really slick, and uh, yeah, that's everything that was shown off at the Xbox Showcase, after that they did like a Starfield Direct, we're not going to be talking about the, that here, again, if you want to know like more in-depth stuff about Starfield, you can go look up videos or just go watch the Direct for that, but I'll just say this much, the game looks absolutely phenomenal, and I am beyond excited for it. Next up we got Capcom Showcase, and uh, yeah, this one was actually a lot shorter so but one of the first things we saw was pragmata and it wasn't anything new or you know it wasn't like hey, here's a release date for pragmata or here's a new gameplay no it was just them saying hey pragmata is uh, getting delayed we also saw ghost trick phantom detective apollo justice ace attorney trilogy path of the goddess was confirmed for ps5 we saw some stuff about exo primal and then some stuff about dragon's dogma 2 and yeah that was basically it now let's go ahead and talk about the ubisoft showcase which had a good bit more than the capcom showcase did so again pretty decent sized list of games we're just gonna go through it just dance 2024 edition who oh my god who was surprised about that one man another just dance oh, man I, I could never imagine it honestly threw me off guard another just dance game i mean they come out so rarely we only get one like once every decade it was it was it was so shocking obviously i'm being sarcastic there is three things that are guaranteed in life death taxes and an annual just dance game oh we also found out that just dance is an olympic esports series event now and then we also saw avatar frontiers of pandora this game looks pretty cool x defiant more of prince of persia the lost crown Captain Laserhawk, a Blood Dragon remix, which is an anime that'll be coming to Netflix later this year. The Division Resurgence, Skull and Bones. And then we got like this sizzle reel of like everything that's been happening with like popular Ubisoft in the last couple months, like uh, the Roller Drome with Jet Set Radio crossover and stuff like that. And then after that, we got a, we saw that there's going to be a skate add-on for Riders Republic, which is pretty cool. Rayman is coming to Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope later this year. The Crew Motor Fest got a new cinematic gameplay trailer and all that, and that game will be coming to, uh, September 14, 2023. Super excited for that one. Assassin's Creed Nexus VR, Assassin's Creed Chinga, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Star Wars Outlaws, and yeah, that was that. That was all of the showcases that happened within the last week. I didn't know if I was actually going to be able to do that, but um, I managed to do it. I doubted myself. I, I really did. I was sitting there watching the showcases like, I, I was like, am I really going to be able to squeeze all of this into one WGC episode? But... We did it. Anyways, that's all the stories I got for you guys this week. No, I'd definitely love to hear from you guys. I know we blasted through the stories really quick in the beginning, but it's because I knew that the last couple stories where we recapped all the events was going to take a while. So I just wanted to make sure we had more than enough time to do that just in case, just so this episode wouldn't get dragged out. But yeah, whatever you're thinking, whether it be about the showcases or whatever we talked about earlier, I can't even remember at this point. Just let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. Anyway, this is Weekly GCAP. New episodes go live every single Friday at 9 a.m. Eastern. So if you want to catch them as soon as they go live, well, then I know when to be here. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Have an amazing day and an amazing weekend. Stay beautiful. I love you all. Peace.